Hi everyone, it's Tracy from Science Buddies. Welcome to our hands-on coding tutorial on tick identification. Today, we'll be creating a dataset that will be able to tell the difference between three types of ticks, A. americanum, D. variabilis, and I. scapularis. Here are images of each kind. Can you easily tell the difference between them? It is important to be able to tell what kind of tick you are encountering, because some may be harmless while others may carry tick-borne diseases, such as Lyme disease. Tick-borne diseases are diseases that are spread by ticks. Lyme disease is one kind of tick-borne disease, and it is typically spread by two types of black-legged ticks, one of which is I. scapularis, which we will be collecting data for in our project. According to a study done in the University of Wisconsin, after performing an image-based surveillance program, it found that members of the general public, so me and you, scored 13.2%, 19.3%, and 22.9% identification accuracy for A. americanum, D. variabilis, and I. scapularis. Of course, these numbers are far from ideal, since you would want to know with higher confidence what your risk of Lyme disease is. Machine learning is one way to help us identify ticks without help from an expert, and we'll show you exactly how. We provide most of the code for this project on our project page which will be linked in the description below. From here, you would want to scroll down until you find the tick identification.zip folder under the setting up the Google Colab environment section. Click on it to download. Then, in your downloads folder on your computer, unzip the folder by right-clicking on it, then select extract all. You'll notice that this creates a new folder of the same name but without the zip icon. Then, you want to upload this to Google Drive. Select my drive here, then you can drag and drop the new folder into your drive. From here, you can open the notebook by double-clicking inside the folder. There, you'll find a notebook called tickidentification.ipynb. Double-click on that file to open the notebook. Congratulations, you are now ready to code. But wait, we have no data yet. We'll first collect data on this website called iNaturalist, which has millions of user-generated image data. From here, you can search for our species of interest in the search bar. Let's start with A. americanum. I'll look up americanum first, then look for our species, and this must be it, Amblyoma americanum, otherwise commonly known as Lone Star Tick. You'll see how some images have this research-grade label on them, and we recommend using them because these images have been confirmed as being the right species. From here, try to use images that show the tick as clearly as possible, something like this or this. Try not to use images like this where the tick is too small and you can hardly tell what it is. Whenever you choose an image, you can download it by right-clicking, then open in a new tab. Right-click on the image itself and then save image as. You don't have to rename it, but for clarity, I'll put A. americanum 1. Then, back in your tick identification folder on my drive, there should be a folder called data. Double-click on that and inside that folder should be three more folders with the names of the different tick species. Double-click on the folder where you want to upload images of a specific species, and you can simply drag and drop to upload it. Aim to download at least 50 images of each species. Once you have uploaded at least 50 images of each species, we are now ready to go back to our notebook. If you have never used Google Colab before, it is a platform where you can write, run, and share code. To run a code block, you can click on this play button here, or click on a code block and press Ctrl Enter on your keyboard, or Command Enter if you're on a MacBook. Now, let's get started. First, we'll be importing various libraries so that we can use the functions that are available within those libraries. Run this code block. Then, we'll mount the Google Drive so that we can access the data we uploaded earlier. Run this code block. We can view the images we just uploaded by running these code blocks. The first block will show you A. americanum, the second will show you D. variabilis, and the last will show you I. scapularis. You can also view more images by running the blocks over and over again. In the last block of this section, we are simply converting all of the images into JPEG files. This is because on iNaturalist, there are PNG and JPEG files. So to make it easier on our machine learning model, we just convert everything to one type. Run this code block. We will now split the dataset into train, validation, and test. We will link a video below if you want to learn more about why we do this data split. Run this code block. 
The next code block will allow us to see how many images are in each dataset. There should be about 60% in the train dataset, and 20% in validation, and 20% in test. Run this code block. We can see that we have 90 in train, 30 in both validation and test. This makes sense because those are 60, 20, and 20% respectively of 150 images total. Now for the fun part. Before we actually train our model, we will be performing image augmentation. Here, we'll practice performing image augmentation on a single image before we do it on the rest of our dataset. Image augmentation is the process of creating more images from what you have so that the model has more data to train on. For example, rotation will rotate the image randomly, translation will shift the image by a certain amount, zoom will zoom in and out of an image, and so on. For example, I'll first comment out all of these lines except for rotation. Currently, it is set to 0.1, or 10%, so the image will rotate randomly by 10%. Don't forget to run this block. We can run these other blocks to select a random image to perform image augmentation on. This is a random one from our dataset. Once we run this code block, we can see how the rotation affected our image, and we can see that this has been rotated. Play around with these parameters, and you can comment everything but one at a time to see how each of these would affect the image. And don't forget that each of these values should be between 0 and 1. And don't forget to run all of the blocks in this section to test it. You can do so by collapsing this block and clicking on the play button here, and reopen to see the results. Once you have decided on the parameters for image augmentation, more details of what makes good augmented images can be found on the project page. You can now augment the rest of the train data. Simply run this code block to perform image augmentation on the train data. Don't worry if this takes a while. Images are very complex data to the computer. If you want to see the images that are being created, you can go back to your My Drive and click on any of the folders within the train dataset folder. These will populate as the code is running. Finally, we can train our model. There is not much to do here besides running all the blocks, and you can either run one block at a time or collapse the section and click the play button. Don't worry if this also takes a while. We can find the results of our model by running all the code blocks in this section. We can see the accuracy here. How much higher can you get this from the general public's accuracy? Remember their accuracies were 13.2%, 19.3% and 22.9% for each of the three ticks. We can also see more metrics via this classification matrix. No need to worry about support or weighted accuracy, but for everything else we can see precision, recall, and F1 score for each of the three ticks, as well as the overall accuracy and macro average. For more information on each of these metrics, make sure to check out the project page. If you would like to create a more accurate model, there are a couple things you can do. First, of course, you can gather more data. You can upload more to the correct folders in your Google Drive. Before you run the notebook again, just make sure to select these train, validation, and test datasets and delete them so that your new data can be properly randomized and split again. Then, you can run everything in a notebook by clicking on Runtime, then Run All. How much more accurate does the model become after adding 50 more images? 100 more images. You can also try to test different parameters in the image augmentation portion, which I'll remind you is in section 4 in code block 4a. For this, also don't forget to delete the train, validation, and test folders before running all of the code again. Can you make a model that can score much higher in identifying different ticks than the general public can? And with that, we reach the end of this coding tutorial. Remember that you can find written instructions on the project page linked in the description below. And for a thousand other projects for all areas of science and engineering, visit our website www.sciencebuddies.org.